This video is the second part of our discussion on Metmix under the 2023 WAS Physics Practical. In this video, my focus will be on the simulation of one of the possible experimental setup you are going to come across. And this time around, I'm going to make use of the Marvin Hope Physics Lab simulation environment to carry out this experiment so that you have a feel of how the experiment is carried out and also have an idea of how to plot the graph and answer some questions. So let's get started. Here you have the Marvin Hope Physics Lab. I'm going to go to the experiment menu. Then I'm going to select experiment three, which has the experiment that we're interested in. So here you have the experimental setup. You have your spring that uh, suspending some masses. The, the whole thing is hanging from the retail stand. And you also have your stopwatch to take note of the number, the time that elapsed for a given number of oscillations. So here you have the apparatus and here you have the procedure. So let me summarize the procedure. So you suspend the spring vertically on the retail stand, then you add mass M on the free end of the spring. Then you pull the mass gently upwards and you release it. Is that how you pull it upward or downward? And you release it to set it into vertical oscillations. Then you determine the time T for N complete oscillation. In this particular scenario, the N is actually 10 oscillation. It could be 10, it could be 20, it all depends on the examiner. Then you evaluate the period T. Period is the time divided by the number of oscillation. Then you also evaluate the score of the period. Then you repeat the entire procedure for various values of N. You tabulate T squared and T. You tabulate T squared and M and you plot the graph of T squared on the vertical axis against M on the horizontal axis, then you find the slope. So the entire purpose of this experiment is to lead you towards computing the stiffness or the force constant of the spring. So let's start the experiment. We well, have the simulation environment for this experiment. So first I'm gonna show you how the readings are structured. So the first thing I'm going to do is to set the mass to be 60. Then we'll measure the time taken for 10 oscillations. Then we measure, we compute the period, which is the time divided by 10, which is the number of oscillations. Then we'll compute the square of the period. So you may be wondering why do we have 60, 70, 80, 90, 100? So this is what I guess, it, I guess it's going to be like this because there is a mass which is concealed. So let's say that mass is 20. We are using 20. Now you have other masses. Mass is uh, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, right? So which means if you have an initial 20 and you add 40 to it, that will give you 60. If you add another, if you, if you remove the 40 and you add 50, you're going to get 70 and so on. So this reading is based on the apparatus given by why if you haven't watched the first part of this video you should watch that to see the apparatus proper so let's carry out this experiment virtually so we're going to set the mass to be 60 grams then the next thing we are going to do is to oscillate this entire motion so to do that in in a real lab you stretch this downward or you, or you compress it upward and you release it so I'm going to start the simulation process and count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So here we have ten oscillations. So I'm going to check the time taken for those number of oscillations. So ten oscillations we have eleven seconds. So I'm going to write 11 seconds. So what about the period? The period is the time divided by 10, and that's 1.1. Then the square of the period is 1.21. So let's carry out the second one. For the second experiment, we 
set the, the, the mass to be 70 grams, then we oscillate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So here I want to check the number of the time taking. So this is roughly twelve seconds. So this is roughly twelve seconds, and that's 1.2 as the period then when you square this up you're going to get 1.44 so let's go on to the third reading so this time around we're going to set the mass to be 80 then we begin the oscillation one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so let's check what the time now what, what the time is the time here is roughly 12.8 so this is roughly 12.8 then the period is 1.28 if you take the square of that, you will get 1.638. So let's move on to the third, to the fourth reading. So we're going to move this to 90. So the mass will be set to be 90 grams. So let's oscillate the, the spring. 1, 2, 3. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So let's take our reading. So this time around we have roughly thirteen point five. Thirteen point five. And if you compute the period, you get one point three five. And if you take the square of it, you will get 1.82. Let's take a look at the last reading. So this time I'm going to set the mass to be 100 grams. Then I'm going to oscillate the motion. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now we check what the reading is. So this is roughly fourteen point two. Then the period is one point. Four, two, then the period square becomes 0.016. So now we're done with the taking of the readings. So the next thing is to plot the graph. The graph would be a graph of t squared against m. So let's go to the graph section. So I'm going to walk through the entire process. So how do you plot it, this kind of graph? To plot any graph, you start with the title. So let's give this title graph of t squared. So you can say some of t squared versus the mass, which is n. So the x-axis will be labeled n. And we know this is in grams. Then we are going to label the y-axis, which is uh, the t squared which we know to be in second square. So here we have it. So the next thing is to define the scale of the graph. 
So, so the scale means what will be the minimum value on the x-axis and the maximum the range of values on the on both axes. That's the scale. To get the right scale, you can get a clue from the values on the table of readings. So the next step is to set the scale on the x and the y axis. Since we are not interested in the intercept, we don't need to consider the origin where you have zero on the x and zero on the y. So if you want to know more about to set a good scale, you can check a video that we made about how to make a good plot on paper. So this is the scale I'm going to use for this graph. So on the x-axis, I set the minimum to be 50, the maximum to 120, and a step of 10. On the y-axis, the minimum is 1, the maximum is 2.2, and a step of 2. So the reason why you can't see the origin is we don't need the origin in this experiment because we are not interested in the x or y intercept. So it doesn't need to pass through, it doesn't need to cut through any of the axes. Okay, so let's take a look at the next thing. The next thing is to locate this point on the graph. To do that, you click on this pencil sign, this pencil sign, then you identify where you have m as 60, where the t square is 1.21. So when you have m as 60, you locate 1.21 on the y axis. So this is 1.2, then 1.21 should be somewhere here. So we have it somewhere here. So you click. So the next is when m is 70, you have 1.44. So this is 1.4, then this is 1.4 or somewhere here, this intersection. Then the next is when m is 80, you have 1.6. So when m is 80, you have 1.638. So this is 80, then 1.6. This is 3, then 3, 8 is somewhere here. So the next is when m is 90, when the mass is 90, t square is 1.82. So this is 1.8, and 2 should be somewhere here. So when we have m as 100, then t square is 2.0, 2.016. So which is somewhere one six zero one six so, so it's, it's here. So now we've gotten all our points located on the graph. And the next is to draw the line of best fit. To do that, you click on this line of best fit pencil and you try to draw a line that touches as many points as possible so let's say we have roughly this so it passes through the middle of most of the points so i'm going to stop here then the next is to get the slope done so to get the slope, we just pick any two points here. Let's pick this and another point somewhere here. Okay, so the next thing is to figure out the x1. So let's take this to be y1 and this is y2. So this y1 is some is roughly 1.4, 1.4. Then y2 is roughly 1.6, 1.62, roughly 1.62. Then the difference is 0 0.22. And same thing, the value for the x1 is this, which is roughly 60. 9.3 so 
then for this one the value is roughly 80 so if you subtract 69.3 for 80 you're going to get 10.7 so now that we've gotten the change in y and change in x we, we look for the slope which is the change in y divided by change in x and that is slope is roughly 0 0.02 Okay, so we're done with the graph. So the next part of this experiment is the question section. So there are some questions here where you'll be asked to compute the value of k. So given that we have our slope as 0 0.02, we should calculate the value of k. And if you plug in the value of slope here, you're going to get, you're going to get roughly 1.97. So we have another question. The question two is some kind of calculation if you have a false magnitude of this. So I'm going to leave this as, as an assignment for you to work out. So now the next thing we're going to do is to submit and see how we perform in this experiment. So the Magnum Physics Lab allows you to see correction and gives you guide on how to go about every aspect of physics experiments. So let's take it. So here is how we perform in this experiment so this is just a rough this is just a rough experiment i just did quickly and if you check it out we performed well in the reading and setting the graph axis and defining the graph point in the question section i actually didn't answer the second one so that's why it's just 50 percent and this is how i spent my time in various aspects of the experiment so the software gives you detailed analysis on how you perform and also provides the correct answer so this is my graph and this is the graph that I'm expected to have. Then these are my values and this is the computer value. So this is basically how you carry out this particular experiment. And I wish you all the best to your exam.